Well, welcome again to Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. I'm Pastor Jeremy Heikam, and I'm very happy to be with you today as we take a look at chapter 13 of Max Licato's book, Traveling Light. Uh, this uh, chapter is titled Silent Nights and Solitary Days, The Burden of Loneliness. As I think about loneliness, I think, um, you know, the, the major thing for us to remember about the the reality of loneliness is that loneliness isn't always so much a feeling. Uh, I'm sorry, isn't always so much a, 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 a what's the word we're looking for? Like a reality. It's it's usually uh, a feeling, a mindset, an understanding um, that we have that we take on um, when something happens in our life that leaves us feeling somehow without, left out. Um, overlooked, passed by, all of those kinds of things. And so, you know, Lakato talks about loneliness this way in his book. Um, on page 107, he says, By now you've learned that you don't have to be alone to feel lonely. 2,000 years ago, 250 million people populated the earth. Now there are more than 5 billion. If loneliness could be cured by the presence of people, then surely there would be less loneliness today. But loneliness lingers. Uh, and he goes on after that to uh, sort of recall a story from his early years of ministry where um, he, had, he had prayed about having so many friends that, you know, we struggle to spend time with all of them sufficiently. And, and a man responded to him, he didn't have that kind of friends. Maybe the pastor had that kind of friends, but but he surely didn't. And and then Lakato makes this incredible point, and he says, listen, loneliness, loneliness. Can it even come and happen to us when we're surrounded by a church family? It can happen. So what I really kind of wanted to do today was, was help you think a bit more about where loneliness strikes us. Uh, Max Lakato brought up some great examples um, on the... Uh, uh, on the last page of this chapter here, I think it is. Um, uh, yeah, on page 110, um, the middle of the page, it says, You may be facing death, but you aren't facing it alone. The Lord is with you. You may be facing unemployment, but you're not facing it alone. Uh, you may be facing marital struggles, um, facing debt, so on and so forth. Then he says, underline these words, you are not alone. And, and that's kind of really where I want to be with you today. Uh, loneliness. When does it strike? Why does it strike? How does it strike? I think it strikes, um, I would like to say, at the most inopportune times. Because when we look at it from our lives, we think, oh man, you know, there's so many other things happening in life at this moment. Um, and now to have this sense of loneliness on top of it, what a terrible time for something like this to happen. True, true enough. Um, it's interesting how um, a little bit later on in the book, Max Lakato is going to talk about how there, there, there might be some instances where God is actually removing things from our lives in order that he would have room to add something else to our life. Almost always that means to add himself back into our lives. So, for example, sometimes he has to get rid of things like uh, an addiction or um, a bad relationship or... Um, you know, some other kind of thing. We have to get rid of that thing out of our lives in order so that there's room for him to come in and, and kind of be with us. Um, I think that idea happens with loneliness. You know, sometimes we are so alone, I think, or we feel like we're alone because because there's, there's, it, there's something missing. Um, for example, let's say um, you've just recently lost a, a dear loved one, maybe a spouse, maybe a, a brother, sister, parent, maybe even a child. There's going to be this incredible sense of something missing. I think I've probably shared that with so many folks um, in the moments, the weeks, uh, the months after losing a loved one. When they say, you know, I, I come home, the house is quiet. I just keep thinking I'm going to hear their voice or, or something of that nature. There's, there's a loneliness. There's a gap that that person filled that is no longer filled. And when we look at it from our perspective, we look at that as like a really terrible thing. Here I am all alone. I don't have the one that I loved. I don't have whatever. And, and, and we have this 
gaping wound almost this open hole in our lives that we wish that person could refill what if we looked at it as an opportunity for god to fill that place in our lives what if that place that that loved one took in our hearts in our minds in our daily lives our schedules our actions what if we were able to replace that with god that doesn't that doesn't mean forgetting the person that doesn't mean forgetting whatever it is that, that that god has sort of asked you to give up in that space that doesn't mean you know forgetting your best friend who all of a sudden you know doesn't want to talk to you doesn't want to be with you uh and and there's this broken relationship now the idea of the replacement is that there's a wound there there's a there's a loneliness there's a hurt there's a pain um, there's a depression that can come with that and instead of those things what if we look at it from a more positive perspective god has this incredible opportunity now in our lives to be with us to use us to move us to to engage with us to have us engage with others it's a really great opportunity i love the phrase that max Licato used he says you don't have to be alone in order to feel alone so true and i think this is the other side of the loneliness coin we talked a bit about your loneliness my loneliness what happens when we feel lonely but what about what about your neighbor what about that person that you um that you see when you go out to the mailbox every day what about those people who sit at the other end of the pew from you at church what about what about there's so many folks in this world i think who are feeling a sense of loneliness and i don't know that we always stop to consider that i don't know that we always stop to think you know um i don't ever really see people talking to that person over there i i wonder maybe they're maybe they're feeling very lonely uh, maybe this is an opportunity for me to reach out to them. Um, I remember specifically, I think I've talked to you about this before. Um, I remember specifically a young man um, who I went to elementary school with. Um, and his family was so incredibly poor. Um, maybe I would say the poorest people I've ever met in my life. Um, this family, of course... Uh, they never had enough to go around. And so this young man would come to school in clothes that were beaten and torn and dirty, um, clothes that his brothers had worn years before him that really had no life left in them at all. Um, this, this young man, I would often see him at lunchtime uh, when we're out for recess, sitting on a step uh, beside the building, and um and just sitting there and nobody really ever offering to play with him nobody ever offering to talk with him anything of that nature and eventually what i saw happen was there was this anger that built up in this young man and he became he became almost kind of violent he became bitter and uh, when people did try potentially to engage him or something happened where he had to speak to other people he was always rude he was he was uh, it, it was it was really awful and what ended up happening, I think, in that moment is that this young man had such loneliness, really because of his socioeconomic situation with his family. And that loneliness created this major gap in his heart and in, in who he was. He didn't have these friends. He didn't have these opportunities to, to play, to hang out, to be a kid. And so he filled it up with the only other thing that, really that came his way, which was something he created, bitterness, anger, frustration. What if that hole, that gaping hole of loneliness had been filled by God in some way? What if, what, what if God had moved me in that moment to go and speak with him and create a friendship with him? And, and, and I am in no way bragging here. I'm not boasting at all because, frankly, I still didn't do it very well. But that kind of happened. Eventually, I sort of said, this is silly. This kid, I think he just needs somebody to care about him. And so I began to talk with him a bit. I began to try to engage with him. And like I said, he had become bitter. And so it wasn't really pleasant. He never really, uh, as far as I know, took to me as a friend. Um, and, and, and I got very frustrated, frankly, with that. But the reality is, this is what I think loneliness does to us. 
we call loneliness all other kinds of things. We call it depression. We call it, um, uh, you know, shrinking away from society, backing away from society. You know, some people have been, uh, some, some, some men especially, have been referred to as like hermits or something of that nature, wanting to back away into their homes and kind of be by themselves in solitude. And while there's a sense in which I think that can be okay, they just like to be by themselves, I, I think there's a sense in which we also need to recognize there's a, there's a, there's a hole there. There's, there's a room that needs to be filled up. So these are some examples. Now I want to go back to your life for just a minute. Where's, where's that hole in your life? Um, where's that, that gaping area of loneliness? And then really think about it and ask the Lord, you know, is this, is this a place where I just, I just need to sort of be calm and silent with you? Let you come in and fill that space in, in me? Um, is this a is this a loneliness that I feel like? For example, if we're talking about with our spouse, okay, is this a loneliness that I feel because of something else that we need to talk about as husband and wife? Is it something that's going on in our relationship? Is it something with the kids? What's causing this sort of feeling of this this hole between us? This this loneliness, um, you know, it could be a, a whole other you know relationship, all different kinds of relationship with your children, with with other people. I think the way that we address the loneliness is we go before the Lord, right, as David did. And we are reminded that he is with us, right? He says, I will always be with you until the very end of the age. So God is always with us. He has a desire to be with us and be there. We, in our humanness, right, we haven't allowed him into that peace of loneliness for us. So we go to God and we say, God, I know you're with me and I want to be with you. Help show me the this loneliness. Show me how you would use this loneliness. Are, are, are you wanting to come and, and, and do more in my life in that moment? Is there something you're asking me to do? Is there something I need to learn to see? Is there something that, you know, do I just need to sit back and be peaceful and quiet in this moment? Um, the problem with loneliness ultimately is we fill it up with stuff. This is one of the biggest, I think, um, cautions that I would give to folks who lose, for example, a spouse. We, I think, quickly try to start filling up the time we spent with them, the things we did with them, uh, with, with other stuff. We kind of try to keep ourselves busy. In fact, people always say, you know, keep yourself busy and you won't feel that grief. Right, because maybe you're not dealing with it. Maybe we're not recognizing the loneliness. And so I encourage you, you got to be aware of it. You've got to You've got to recognize it exists and admit it to God and say, I am lonely in this space. And watch how he comes in and fills that space and changes, I think, our whole perspective on that empty space. Again, whatever it is that's missing, if it's a person, if it's a previous you know, addiction or something, it's not that we necessarily always forget about that, that we, that we completely forget. We don't. The, the memories are still there. The reality of what that addiction was is still there, whatever it is. But God has changed it. When he comes in, it becomes something different. I hope that you guys have a great week this week. I hope it's not a lonely week for you. I hope that if indeed you are feeling lonely, um, you will reach out to God. You'll reach out to me or some other brother and sister in the church. Um, loneliness it's it's not i think what god has in mind for us sometimes he he uses it in order to fill our lives with something better and more but he wants us to come to him and and declare our loneliness so that he can remind us that he is always with us yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for Thou art with me. You are there with me. And so um, I hope you remember that God is with you today. Have a great week. We'll see you again next week as we look at chapter 14.